wants to step up as 2IC? Let me put myself on share thing. Who wants to step up as 2IC for your maneuvers? What? Only one of you. There you go. That's better. Cool. Blant, you're stepping up to 2IC. <laughs> it's fun that way. Um, you're not going to need to do much. Uh, as I said, I'll be taking you through most of the stuff. You'll just be needing to call set when you're on your final exercise. So we'll have... Who have we got? We'll have House, Blan, Attila, Warlito, your Delta. And then Carlisle, you've got Booth, Blue. Ward and Riley. So create a little gap in between the two of you, the, the sections. <laughs> Pardon me. What went down the wrong way? Not that big a gap, chaps. Come on. There you go. That's better. Cool. So we're going to start you off with the basics. If you three were to bring it closer into Boris Blant, he won't bite. I think. Cool. So we're going to start with some basics. Uh, we're going to run through some formations. Uh, very quickly, and then we'll get you on to some section manoeuvres. Uh, as said, phase one teaches you the basics, so you're proficient enough to move into your sections to be able to know how to do these when commanded by your IC or 2IC, and then they'll be built upon more advanced manoeuvres and platoon manoeuvres once you're connected to your phase two and you're training with them. So can anyone tell me first of all, what I'm referring to when I say uh, daytime spacing. What should your daytime spacing be? Biff? Uh, are we talking actual meters or...? Uh, yeah, put, I'll, I'll go into normal, I can barely hear you from over here. Uh, are we talking just the uh, space yeah. track attack or...? Meters. meters. Uh, it's 10 uh, is the minimum. Ooh, any advances on 10, Atala? Um, so, um, daytime spacing is around 10 meters between each, um, well, soldier. Um, He's yeah. getting there. You're almost there. 10 to 15 meters. Yeah. So 10 to 15 meters, depending on terrain, usually. Um, so that'll be your standard spacing now. As you can see, we're a bit short of space here for getting you in the full spacing. So we're going to do it with small spacing tonight when we're doing our formations and we're doing our movement. But once you're in the field, you need to remember 10 to 15 metres. Or if you use shack tack, it's basically one bubble on the shack tack. What about nighttime spacing? Riley? Five. Yep, five meters. When else would you use nighttime spacing? Blant. Not sure. Booth? Uh, urban environments. Mm, possibly. Urban, urban movement and urban combat is a different kettle of fish entirely. It's not something we cover in phase one. That's up to your IC and 2IC to take you through uh, more advanced styles of combat. Anybody else? At all? Potentially bad weather, heavy fog. Yep. Heavy fog, heavy rain. What about other types of terrain? What if you're moving through a forest? Or a dense jungle? Do you think uh -huh. you'd shorten your spacing then? Yep. Yeah, you would. Your, uh, your spacing really is your IC's discretion if he wants to bring it in or move it further apart. But you should know your defaults are 15 metres for daytime and your 5 metres at night. Or as much as visibility dictates. If you can't see 5 metres in front, it might be brought in even further. And as I said, fog, heavy rain and uh, jungle or forest terrain. Where poor visibility is a problem, it might be brought in shorter as well. Cool. 
So, can anyone tell me what formation you're in at currently? Column? Line. Toward? Right, the line. The line. Line, baseline, extended line. They're all the same thing. Different people, different ICs call them different things. I've always called it an extended line because that's how I was taught donkeys ago. A lot of people prefer baseline or line. Bolito, what are the advantages of, advantages of a baseline? Advantages are you have uh, maximum firepower to the front and rear. Is he right, Booth? Uh, no, it's maximum firepower to the front and only the front. With uh, slight cover to the sides. Everybody face northwest for me. You two house. Do you, do you have maximum firepower out your rear now? Yeah. My rear yeah. has changed. Though. Well, your rear's changed. But there's no other section members obscuring your view. Everybody face back around this way. So yeah, you've got maximum firepower out to your front, because that's the way you're facing. And if you do a quick 180, you've got maximum firepower out to your rear, without having to manoeuvre any of your section, or any fire team. So yep, you've got maximum firepower out to the front and rear, and you did say poor visibility out to the sides, poor cover out to the sides. When, when do you think you'd be using this formation? Riley? If you knew where the enemy were. Yeah, can do. Anybody else? Uh, assaulting. Yep, if the terrain dictates. Oh, see what's gone. Yep, if the terrain dictates. There are other formations, personally, I prefer for an attack. Um, but generally speaking, <laughs> I always like to think of this as your transitional formation. It's your jack of all trades, it's the one that you use to get into any other formations. It's the one you use as your default. Does that make sense to everyone? Everybody happy with the baseline? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Cool. Everybody face the southwest for me? What formation are we in now? Column. A file. A file or a column, correct. Again, like a baseline, it's got a couple of different names. A column, single column, file, single file. It's all the same thing. What are the advantages? Oh, house, what's the advantage? Um, can't really bump, in, bump into an IAD. And... I mean, you can. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, of course, but... Well... Tell that Tatilla who's just had his leg blown off. Yeah, but the rest of us haven't. Correct. It is a safe way to move when there's an ID threat or a mine threat because really only your front and probably your second man are at risk. What are other advantages of the formation? Uh, the fact that you can move fairly effectively through any sort of terrain and you have decent cover to the left and right. Is he right, Warlito? Yep. Yep, he is. So you got maximum firepower out to your sides. All you need to do is turn 90 degrees, depending on where the contact's coming from. There's no obstructions in your way, unless it's naturally occurring or you're in a town. Um, and, yeah, you can move across terrain fairly effectively. It's uh, a good formation. Generally speaking, we'd use this if we've got a, uh, we need to tab out through multiple RV points. Generally speaking, if you're in, uh, going cross country, nine times out of ten you'd use a column. You could use staggered, but six half a dozen. Speaking of which, can I have Warlito, Blant, and Riley all take a few steps to your left and line up with me. Wonderful. What formation are we in now, chaps? Next uh, column. column. Well, you all knew that one because I gave it away, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, give me some advantages of a staggered column. 
booth. Yep. Uh, it's just all round good defense. You've got decent fire to the front, decent fire to the rear, pretty good to the left, pretty good to the right. Does he have decent fire to the front at all? He's got two men to the front. Yeah. So Better standard section's made up of eight men. Of those eight men, you've got Charlie Delta, you'll have an LMG and a GPMG into the intersection. Bearing in mind the GPMG and the LMG combined make up 50% of the section's firepower, you've got two men with rifles at the front of your formation. Do you have good cover out to the front? No. Ten points to Riley. It is better than a column. Granted, you've got double the amount of firepower out to the front. But it's not as good as a baseline, is it? Or some of the other formations we'll mention in a second. So yeah, although it can be, it is better than a column. Don't rely on your firepower out to the front. Speaking of doubling, what does it also double? Your beaten path. Go on. Your risk of stepping on a exploding device. There is another 10 points to Riley. Guess who's winning phase one so far? Yeah. You've got two men at the front walking on opposite sides of the roads. If you've got, if you're walking all along the right side of the road and there's a pressure plate on the left, you're going to avoid it. If you're walking a staggered column, Orlito's going to step on an ID. And if Orlito steps on one, staggered column, your risk also falls on Attila, House, and Blant. Yes, you'll have your spacing, but you're not just injuring the front and second man with the spacing, you're potentially injuring the third and fourth man as well. So that is a big concern. When else, or, or when would you use a staggered column, though? On a road? Yeah, bouncing either side of a ride. Yep, what else? You cover both sides. Both sides of what? Um, of the column. Well, if you're in a standard column, you can still get eyes out both sides. Moving through a built-up area? Yep, built-up area. A town. Although, generally speaking, you'd be on a road if it's a town. But yeah, it spreads your guys out. You can cover windows uh, on both sides of the street, above each other. I'm um, thinking more naturally forming terrain. What if you're wondering... Oh! Who's that? Me. That's Riley. When would you use it, sorry? Going either side of a river. Yeah, we could use it on either side of the river. The problem you've got then is if you do take con contact from one side of the river, half your, f half your section's going to have to swim over before they can assist. Which isn't ideal. But what about hedgerow? The hedgerow that's eight feet tall, you can't see over it. But you want to be able to look out to your left and right. Put the hedgerow in the middle. Guys either side of it. You've still got 360 visibility. And you're still using the concealment of the hedgerow. A river bed you could do if you're wandering, uh, wandering, patrolling um, down a wadi or a dried up river bed. You could use staggered column, one, 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 sec one fire team either side. Or again, more naturally occurring terrain, a gorge or some sort of crevasse. Put guys on either side of it as you're heading up. Cool. If you all want to get back in a baseline then and face me. Blunt, take 10 steps forward. That'll do it. Blunt, Booth and House, take 10 steps forward. It's another 10, Blunt. And now the three of you, Warlito and Riley, take another ten steps forward. 
So how's both 10 steps forward, Gwant 10 steps forward? Wonderful. Now, both take three steps back. Warlito three steps forward. Perfect. What formation do you think we're in now, chaps? Climb. Arrow. 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 Arrowhead. Or an arrow. Who wants to kick off with some advantages of an arrowhead? Go. Sure. Uh, good fire to the front, good fire to the sides, poor, poor cover to the rear. You think? Well, unless you're going to manoeuvre into a line to return fire to the rear. Everybody face the yellow building for me. 180. Bearing in mind you'll be slightly spread out width wise than this. Yeah, true. Does anybody have a man in front of them? No. Nope. No. 360 degrees of maximum firepower. Everybody turn, face the White House for me. Do you have a man in front of you? No. Yes. Oh, well, you do a tilt because I can't really move you back any further. But you would be staggered. You'd be offset to the man on that <laughs> side. So each arm of the arrowhead is staggered against each other. So you don't have a man in front of you when you face left and right. So imagine a staggered column that comes together in a point. And spread out at the back slightly further. Cool. So you've got maximum fire 360 degrees. You're able to engage any targets from any ambush points that you might encounter. When do you think you'd use this formation? Attacking. Attacking? By the area. Possibly. By the area. Sorry, what was that house? You're in a wide open area? Yep, wide open area. Moving through hostile terrain. Bingo. Hostile terrain. If you're in a nice safe area that you're moving through or you know it's going to be quiet or it's going to be remote and there's not going to be much enemy presence there, by all means walk through your RV points in a, in a column. You're still able to react if you do encounter an enemy patrol, but you're not expecting contact so a column's quicker. If you're advancing into enemy held area and you know there's going to be enemy patrols, ambush points, MG nests, God knows what, this is a good formation for it. If you're ambushed from the left or the right, you can react to it quickly. What are some disadvantages of this, Thoatella? This formation. Um. Is it difficult Punch. to uh, to organise and keep as a formation? Yeah, it's pretty difficult to organise. Everyone have a high chance of stepping on something explosive. There he is. Doing well on this one, Riley. Better than shooting, at least. Yes. We talked about when you're moving from a column to a staggered column, you double your chance of hitting an ID or a mine. You're all spread out with nobody walking in front of you. That means every single one of you is just as likely to hit an ID, ID or a mine. From the guy at the front to the guy at the back. Which is a risk. So although you've covered yourself against infantry targets, mines and IEDs become a hell of a threat to this section. Another issue is, what do you think this looks like from above? We are going this and way. pointing the direction of travel. Yep. You're pointing your direction of travel. Think about the, uh, the presence this has in the landscape. Big diamond shape or a big triangle shape. You have a high chance of being spotted by enemy recon. Correct. Very, very visible. So although it might be safe in theory if you're ambushed, it might not be. Because you've got more chance of getting spotted than you're in, in a nice little sneaky breaky column moving through a gorge. Again, this is more information for your IC to be considering. But if it's a path you want to go down, 
I see two I see stepping up in the unit. And it's information you're going to have to start considering as well. Cool. Everybody happy with an arrowhead? Yep. Yeah. Any questions yes. about any of the formations we've covered so far? Nope. Nope. Cool. Everybody get a baseline for me. Use Booth as your anchor point. And the staggered column. Wait for you to move that. I'm back in an arrowhead. Not bad. What did I say about looking left and right? You shouldn't have a man in line with you. So Ward, I know it's not a lot of room, but step back a few steps. Yeah. Both back a few steps and Riley back a few steps. There you go. So when you look left and right, you shouldn't see another person there. It should give you a clear sight line, although it's a tight angle, and you can't cover much ground. You have a clear sight line direct to your left and right. Cool. I mean, you wouldn't transition through formations that quickly anyway. But not bad. Cool. If everybody wants to get in a column behind Blunt for me. Riley, face left. Warlito, face left. Attila, face left. Ward, face rear. Guys that I haven't spoken to yet, turn right. Cool. What formation, man? Herringbone. Herringbone. Booth, when do we use a herringbone? Uh, I rarely. I'm guessing it's used pretty much only when you're stationary. Um, when you're holding a position for a short period of time out in the open, or if you're lining up for a vehicle, that sort of thing. Yep, can be. Anybody else got any uh, for, uh, ideas? Possibly if we're moving for a place where there's a, an IED threat and uh, we have the idea in front of us, perhaps. So, Booth was right when he said this is a static formation. Because you can't patrol in this formation because you're all facing different directions. So if you all start patrolling forward, you're going four different directions. So he's right when he says it's a static formation. I, I like a herringbone. I use it a lot, or I did when I was an IC, because it's quick, it's easy, everybody knows what they're doing, and it is marvellous when you're walking through RV points. So if we've got five RV points on the map, we're on a patrol, we want to hit all of them, we're approaching RV1, I'm second man as the IC, Blant's my point man, I'll tell him to hold up at RV1 and I'll let the section filter in behind them and get in a formation like this. Bearing in mind this would not be spaced out, this would be as close as you are now, if not a little bit closer. And then turn to my section and say, right chaps, this is RV1, observe it, have a look around, make sure you know the area, if we need to fall back this is where we fall back to. And then, as soon as the last man sat down, the front man steps off again. So if you can imagine you're coiling a spring, or you're squeezing a spring together, and then you're releasing it slowly. But there's no pause time between that. So as soon as the spring's coiled, it bounces off again. Last man stays static for 30 seconds, while the front man steps off. And by the time you hit your spacing again, Ward has had the same time on the ground as Blant did when he was waiting for Ward. Make sense? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Cool. And Booth is also right, you'd use it if you're waiting to board a vehicle or your IC or two IC are about to run a kit check and uh, you're just forming up waiting for them to get organised. Cool. So if everybody wants to start walking towards me, 
and following me. Blanche, stay there, face rear. Riley, keep following. Riley. 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 Yep. Keep following. Following me. Follow me. Oh, <laughs> Cool. Uh, keep following. Keep following. Stay there. Face that red flag. Come on. Keep following. Next man. Face the green watchtower. Warlito. Oh. Roughly. I tell I take a few steps forward. There we go. Cool. What formation are we in? ARD. 360. Fuck. 360 ARD. Boom. Does that was that easy enough to get into? Yeah. Once you understood what I was getting at. Yes. yes. So your point man leads everybody round. And with or your ICO will tend to do it. Your ICO will lead everybody round. Drop them off, and then your IC will go into the middle with his two IC. You guys are all watching the arcs in case you're ambushed or attacked, while your IC and your two IC make plans. This is an alternate thing that you would use if you are hitting an RV point. Some ICs prefer ARDs, I prefer herringbones because they're quicker, and you don't have to wait as long as you can imagine. Especially with new recruits in that they haven't done it very often. People tend to forget how to get into an ARD and don't do the whole following round properly, as we saw tonight. So it can take a bit longer. Whereas the herringbone's nice, quick and simple. Cool. And then what what would happen is to generally if two I see would run around you all, get a quick age report, check in with you all, make sure you're alright, and then you'd step off again. When else would you use the formation? To go to HLS. There it is. Guard of HLS. What's HLS stand for? Helicopter landing site. Helicopter landing site. Fantastic. Cool. One thing. Oh, Sorry. who's that? Very uh, quickly, I need to go at about half ten-ish, just to let you know. Cool. We'll be quick then. I just had one one thing to say. Yep. Is the, the the basic difference in use between a 360 and a herringbone that uh, in a 360 is for a, a long stop whilst a herringbone for a short stop? Yeah, generally speaking. Generally speaking, if you need to hold an RV point for X amount of time because you're waiting for another section to come in, <clears throat> then yeah, by all means, it'll be uh, um, an ARD. You're going to have to hold there for a while. There are different ways of getting into an ARD. That's the quickest one is the one that most ICs use. Other ICs do things slightly differently, but they'll teach you your own way in your phase two. Cool. Everybody baseline for me. Next to Carlisle or in front of Carlisle. Cool. So the next thing we're going to be covering is section movement. Now, any orders coming from your IC or 2IC will follow the same formula. Three steps. Orders will be given. Orders are prepared. Orders are executed. So, there's a couple of pro words you, you need to listen out for. So the first one is will. So the word will indicates the, the IC's intentions. This isn't a call for you to do anything. It's just you to snap into the mindset of, I need to follow an order. I've got an instruction to execute. Prepare happens the same way every time. Regardless of what movement or order it is, preparing is the same action every single time. 
under for under contact that is. And finally, your third stage is actually executing the orders, at which point you'll execute your order. So, an example would be section will bound. Another pro word for you, bound, which we'll demonstrate in a moment. So section will bound. Section prepare to bound. Section bound. Is a, a series of orders. So, everybody hit your belt buckles for me. <laughs> cool. Do you remember who's in Charlie and Delta? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Are, yep. are you in the right order? Nope. 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 Come on, chaps. Get in the right order. Charlie next to Carlisle. Belt on my left. On your right, my left. Don't sprint and hit Z, otherwise, you'll do a flying leap forward. Cool. Now we're sorted. So, section well bound. Charlie, prepare to bound. Now, what are you doing the prepare action? Yep. Mm. As you will scoot backwards. Yep. And then you will scoot to your left. Fantastic. You have all now prepared. So why do you think we're doing this, Charlie Fire Team? Is it to clear lines of fire? To clear whose line of fire? Delta's. Nope. Whoever's behind us. So you've just been firing towards the enemy bunker up at the end of that, uh, at the end of this, uh, basic oh, so ground. Oh, the enemy's line of fire. Oh, so they don't Flash. know where we are. Yeah. Your flash was three feet forward and two foot, foot to your right from the last shot you fired. You've just altered your position. So the enemy who's aiming down sights now thinks he knows where you are. You stand up a second later. You're not in the same spot anymore. Okay, Charlie. You've just prepared. Final start part of your order would be Charlie bound. At this point, you would get to your knee. You fire two shots towards the enemy. Bang, bang. Bang, bang. bang, bang. bang. You can get to your feet. And you run. And can anybody guess what we shout while we're running? Bang, bang. Bang. Nope, you fired your shots. You're not firing on the move. The phrase that you all need to remember. I'm up. Oh, yes. He sees me. I'm down. I'm down. Four seconds, give or take. I'm up, he sees me, I'm down. While you say this, that's how long it will take the enemy to notice you're up, to see you, to sight you, and then by that point you're already back down on the ground. He might fire in your general direction, but he's not aiming at your centre mass. Cool, Charlie, bound. Up. Me. Me. I'm down. And down. I see a problem here. <coughs> Can anybody guess what that problem is? You're a bit spread out. You're a bit spread out. Sorry. So Carlisle went off sprinting. Ward, Ward was a late start. Riley forgot to run entirely. And Booth almost kept up. So while you're on your feet, you want to be sprinting. And you want to stop sprinting and hit Z. You don't want to dive down. So if you all want to get back in line with Riley, that's about the right distance you should have travelled. So both of you want to drop back, get in line with the rest of the guys. And give it a little bit of distance, not shoulder to shoulder. Just as we're doing manoeuvres, spread out a little bit. Uh, yeah, you're fine there. Cool, Delta. You've seen Charlie do it. Delta will bound. 
Delta, prepare to bound. Ah, ah. Back down on the ground. What do we do when we prepare? Attila's got it. You shuffle back. And then you shuffle to your left or right, depending on what you fancy. But I'll shuffle in the same direction. Cool, so Delta's going right, Charlie's going left. Delta, bound. Bang, bang. Bang, bang. Yep, you're on your feet. So the bang, bang. So you're on your feet, in fact. Is that bag out Elkin? Elkin, can you give me an example of preparing for the Delta Fire team? If he's there. <coughs> Sorry, if my microphone's muted, Jesus. <laughs> can you give an example of preparing for Delta? Preparing to bound? Yeah, just to prepare action. Section of Delta prepare to bound. Th oh, well, never mind. Right? I don't know what you're asking. Uh, oh, an magazine. example of prepare. Oh! Yes. Oh, the shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Yeah, so we'll walk through it. So if you go in front. So Elkin, prepare to bound. Elkin, bound. Bang, bang. So you see how it's three clear steps. So you do your shuffle on your prepare. You're on your knees, you fire your shots, then you're immediately on your feet and you're running. Cool, so back down again for me, belt buckles. Delta prepare to bound. Delta bound. Bang bang. Bang bang. bang, bang. bang, bang. I'm up. He sees me. I'm down. Now the key for bounding is you bound and you stay in line with each other. So Delta, when you're bounding, you don't necessarily need to say I'm up, he sees me, I'm down, because Charlie's already done it for you. So you make sure you're in line with Charlie. One, so everybody shuffle forward, and everybody on belt buckles. Does that make sense to everyone, the actions are going through? And believe yeah. me, we're going to drill it yeah. for the next short while, so you get it right. So it's a very easy way of getting yourself killed if you don't do it properly. Because an enemy machine gun nest sights you quicker than you're expecting and blasts you. Cool. Mike, can't hear you. Charlie, prepare to bound. Charlie bound. Bang. I'm up. He sees me. I'm down. So Riley, what do you think you would do in this scenario? You've shorted it. I would then crawl slowly up towards them. Yeah. So you'd crawl a few feet, you'd fire a shot. <laughs> Whatever fire control order you're on, you would fire that shot. You would then crawl again, you would then fire that shot, and you'd make sure you're in line. Delta, prepare to bound. Delta, bound. Bang, bang. Bang, bang. bang. How did you just be shot and killed? You need to get this right, chaps. Mic. Back on. Blam, what have you done wrong this time? Went too far. You've went too far. Yeah, so I've got to sprint back. So what do you think you'd do in this scenario? Either hold my position or work my way back. You'd hold your position in this scenario. And all that would be on your next bound or leap is you wouldn't move as far. You'd wait for the rest of your guys to get in line with you, then you're on your feet, then you're moving. Make sense? Yeah, clear. Rog. Charlie, prepare to bound. Charlie, bound. Bang, bang. I'm up. He sees me. I'm down. It's 
spot on. Bearing in mind you'll have a lot bigger gaps between you when you're doing this, so you won't end up in front of each other. So don't worry about that too much. Now, Delta. We're going to do something a little bit different this time. Delta, prepare to leap. We'll see if we can figure it out. Delta, leap. Bang, bang. Bang, bang. Bang. Bang, bang. I'm up. He sees me. I'm down. Who was it that didn't start chanting until they were in line with Charlie? Was that you, Warlito? That was me. 10 out of 10. So again, guys, just make sure you keep that... Try and keep that line as um, straight as possible. Keep it as crisp as possible. So again, Blant, if you just want to shuffle back in this case, because uh, we're just dry running it. Charlie, prepare to leapfrog. Charlie Leapfrog. Bang bang. I'm up. He sees me. I'm down. Fantastic. Again, try and keep that line as crisp as possible and in line as possible. It's difficult and you'd use terrain to your advantage. For example, if Booth stopped there because there was a low stone wall, but there's no cover for the rest of you guys and you're down there, that's absolutely fine. Again, the spacing is a lot further apart, so you can be a bit more fluid with that line. Now, chaps, we're going to mix it up again. Charlie, prepare to break contact. Now, the only extra thing you're adding in here is at the end of your prepare action. When you're breaking contact, the first time you're ordered to break contact, at the end of your prepare action, and don't do it just now, at the end of your prepare action, you will throw one smoke grenade forward in the direction of the enemy. And then what do you think you're going to do when I tell you to break contact? Yep, exactly like you did before, you're going to leapfrog backwards. So you turn, you face rear, you leapfrog, you then get on back in your belt buckles and face towards the enemy again. So Charlie, break contact. I'm, down. I'm up. Excuse me. I'm down. Delta. Prepare to break contact. Now as I just explained to Charlie. Uh, not sure. Uh, Delta, the only difference is on the first time you're ordered to break contact, and the first time only, at the end of your prepare action and before your order to move, you will throw one smoke grenade forward. Don't actually throw the smoke like someone in Charlie did. This is a dry run. Oh. So, Delta, break contact. Bang, 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 bang. I'm up. He sees me. I'm down. Charlie, to break a break contact. Charlie, break contact. Delta, prepare to break contact. Delta, break contact! Bang, bang. Bang, bang. I'm up. He sees me. I'm down. Excellent. Can I get everybody in a baseline in front of me, please? And Carlisle, could I get you on the far end just to show, do the example for peeling? Cool. Does everybody make? Does that make sense to everybody? Moving mm -hmm. forwards and backwards. How you do yeah. it? Uh, one question. Yes. 
is it only when breaking contact? Is it only the first time uh, when you're finished preparing yes. that you throw the smoke, not the second or third? Correct. So you might have to leapfrog back two or three times, but a standard smoke grenade, I think, lasts 90 seconds. I could be wrong on that, but it's about 60 to 90 seconds. So you don't need to throw a smoke every single time you break, you peel backwards or you um, break contact backwards. You only need to do it the first time. And by the time you've broken contact two or three times backwards, the smoke will start to dissipate, but by that time you're too far away anyway for the smoke to be relevant. You do, however, continue firing your shots through the smoke. You will know a rough direction of the enemy as long as you're keeping their head down and stopping them bringing their full arms to bear as you're pulling back. Can anybody tell me when we would break contact? If we're suffering heavy losses to the front and they've gone down too much and we need to go away. Possibly. If we're suppressed. Possibly. The correct answer is because we want to pull back and smash them from another direction. Remember, the British Army doesn't retreat. We pull back to smash them from somewhere else. Cool. So if everybody hits the belt buckle again, so we've shown you how to move front to back, we're now going to show you how to move left to right. So very, very similar, but one important difference. So, section will peel left. Section prepare to peel left. Now, before you do anything, when you hear section prepare to peel left, only one person should be doing something. And that is your man on the furthest right side of your line. When you hear section peel, only he will be preparing. So, Carlisle, can you prepare for me? So he's in position now, ready for the order. So section, peel left. So Carlisle's onto his knee. He fires his two shots towards the enemy. He That's then will run down the back of the line and hit his belt buckle on the left end. Warlito, what did he say to you as he was passing you? He said last man, Warlito. Yeah. What do you think that lets you know to, what to do? Uh, it lets me know that he's just moved behind me and that in about two, three seconds I'm next. Yep. So as soon as you hear the man shout, or Lethal last man, Riley last man, Ward last man, you know that it's time to start preparing. So you start your prepare action. And as soon as you've finished your prepare action, you then execute the order. So War Lethal, you're up, start preparing. And then you're immediately executing the action. There's no pause. You don't wait for another order. It's all on you. Okay. Bang, okay, bang. I need to go now, Flo. Goodbye. Uh, cool. Right. You will yep. need to come back and finish this part of phase one. Yep. Uh, okay. Sure. Are you free on Tuesday? Yeah, but not all night. Cool. So, generally speaking, we do try and get finished for half ten. Lasted a bit longer tonight because the seven of you's. Okay. So, it may be this time on Tuesday. Okay. See. Uh, what to do? Nope, that'll be that then. Never mind. Cool. Well, Lito, we were preparing to peel. So, as soon as you hear the last man call, you prepare, you, you scoot back, you immediately go into your action, and you peel down the line. Okay. And then when you pass house, you shout house last man. Alright. Bang bang. House last man. House, your oh, turn to fuck. peel. So, for all of you, as soon as you hear that last man call, you move. Bang bang. Kill that last man. Bang bang. Land last man. Oh shit, sorry. Ward, you've just killed your collie because he stepped in front of you. Alright. <laughs> Not your fault. He stepped in your line of fire. 
There's a reason we move along the back and not the front. Bang bang. Do flash man. Bang bang. Tell him last man. Buff, you're dead. And we'll stop it there because that's a full peel. So guess what we're going to do now, chaps? Uh, left to right. Section, prepare to peel right. Bang, bang. I didn't see you shuffle back, Booth. <laughs> Remember, the prepare action is always that shuffle back. And on appeal action, you only start your preparing once you've been told you're the last man. So section, prepare to peel right. Section, peel right. Ward, last man. Bang, bang. Plant, last man. Attila, last man. Bang, bang. How's the last man? Bang bang, Warlito, last man. And again, we'll stop on your Carlisle. Bang bang, Carlisle, last man. Cool, does that make sense to everyone? Bang bang, yeah. booth, last man. Yeah. Cool. So, it's very, very simple if you learn it and you drill it. Your ICs will drill you on peeling, bounding, leaping and breaking contact because they are the basics. You can't do the basics, you can't be doing advanced movement. Simple as that. You'll cock it up and you'll die. You can also imagine peeling, although it's very simple, if done correctly and at speed, looks shit hot. To put it bluntly, it makes you look professional, you're firing, you're moving quickly. If you can do these basics properly, then you'll look fucking good. And let's be honest, everybody wants to have the best looking section. It's the reason why we have an OC's Cup on home rotation and we compete with each other. Cool. If everybody wants to get in a baseline for me, in front of that yellow house. We're going to have a little uh, live action demonstration now. Me and Mr. Elkin are going to be down in that bunker with a couple of GPMGs. We're going to be making life difficult for you as you're attacking it. Carlisle's going to lead you as the IC. He's going to be giving your orders for bounding, leaping, moving. You're going to be in your Delta and Charlie fire teams. And you're going to try and make it to that bunker and kill me and Corporal Elkin. Good luck. Over to you, Carlisle. Give me 30 seconds to go and get set up. Mm-hmm. Nah, we're good for now. Uh, so if you get your weapons, this is off your back. Obviously make sure your BFAs are on. And load them if you haven't already. <laughs> Alright, section patrol pace, uh, walking forward.
Ceasefire. Go, everybody, form up on me. School circle.
Everybody remember to put their earplugs in. Yup. Yep. Yes. Just. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Need to remember, Carlisle. We are going to shoot at you as well. Cool. How was that for everyone? Good, good stuff, good. yeah. Pretty good. That's cool. That suppression, you really feel it. Mm -hmm. Not that bad to have that sim worse. That's, if you have uh, that horrible flashing white effect, it's like ten times worse than that. Bearing in mind, none of us were aiming at you because we had live rounds. Yeah. When an enemy's actually aiming for you, and an enemy can hit you in the chest, and it might not injure you, but you can sure as shit believe your heart rate is going to go through the roof. And you're going to get that white pain flashing around your ears. Cool. Carlisle, how were they? Happy with bad. them? Ah, it was better than the last lot. <laughs> cool. Send something. Virgo, Silken. Oh, Happy with fair. them? Pretty fair. Yeah, it looked pretty good from what I saw. Whisper. Yeah, it looked pretty good from what I saw. Whisper. Still whispering. <laughs> I, I literally there. Yeah, Hello? Yeah, well, cool. yeah, yeah. Look, yeah, look good. Excellent. Yeah, I thought you were pretty good as well. Agree with Carlisle, better than the last lot. Cool. You're all... past phase one. Congratulations. Hey. Hey. 